Hello, everybody. <laughs> so I didn't do a PowerPoint because uh, in a previous life, I had to give PowerPoints for my job. So I realized that you could actually engage people better if you just talk to them and uh, if you don't have technical info to give. So for plans like these, that's ideal. Uh, but for, for me tonight, you just get me. And uh, since this is sort of, the, I think, the first time I'm meeting everybody here, uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of info about who I am and why I'm doing this and kind of what I can see coming down the pipeline for our community in the next few years. So uh, I have a couple of notes. Usually I don't get to use notes, but you have a podium. So I feel very uh, privileged tonight I've got a podium. But uh, so basically, if you have been paying attention to politics, I'm sorry, because it's a little nuts right now. Uh, but if you may not know me, uh, but here's the overview. Jess Phoenix, that's me. I'm a volcano scientist. Uh, so I actually do work for the Discovery Channel. I used to work for the United States Geological Survey at their Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. And I have researched uh, geologic phenomena uh, all over the world, uh, in Asia, in Australia, in South America, Mexico, all over the US. And um, you know, I love what I do. And because of that, I actually uh, started a nonprofit called Blueprint Earth. And uh, we're almost five years old now. And it's been quite an effort. But what we do with Blueprint Earth is we take students out to the Mojave Desert. These are college and university students. And we give them hands-on research experience in environmental science. They work hand in hand with, uh, with more senior scientists. And they're doing it to understand how how the environment works as a system. So it's a pretty cool thing, and we also have an elementary school program that we do as well, where we go out into uh, schools in LA County, uh, typically under-resourced schools that are, um, the, the one we really work with the most is Latino serving. 99% uh, of the students are Hispanic or Latino. And we bring scientists into the classroom to show the kids, hey, look, you can be a scientist, and, and make science friendly and not scary. So. That's what I've been doing. And uh, you know, running for Congress is a different thing, but I did always have an influence in my life to serve. Uh, and that was because my parents were both FBI agents. So I was literally raised by the government, uh, <laughs> the law enforcement side of the government. Uh, my mom is an expert on terrorism and foreign counterintelligence. And my dad uh, actually is an expert in cyber crime and white collar crime. So that's who I grew up with, and I always had this strong sense of duty. And so to me, Congress is an extension of that. Uh, my husband and I live in Acton. Uh, we rescue uh, animals. We have kind of a small herd. Uh, we have two off-track racehorses who we rescued from going to slaughter. And, uh, and then we also have dogs, cats, and pigeons. Don't ask about the pigeons. I don't know how that happened, but we have pigeons. <laughs> um, so why Congress? Uh, well. A little bit of background, I've been in California 10 years. I'm not a native because my parents moved so much when I was a kid, uh, I lived all over the country. But uh, I did spend my teen years in Littleton, Colorado. And some of you might remember that for what happened there in 1999, Columbine High School and the shootings. And I was friends with many, many people involved. And when I was 17, that was my junior year of high school, was when this occurred. So I learned from a very young age that the world can have a lot of hate and a lot of intolerance and a lot of ignorance about different people and different communities. And that was something that stayed with me. And what we're seeing these days in our country, it's not right wing, left wing, it's not Republican, Democrat, it's hate and then people who are compassionate and people who love. And so what I want to do, and one of the reasons, like probably the main reason I've decided to run is that I want to push back against this culture of intolerance and hate and fear, and I want to work with people across, across different divisions because really we need collaborative efforts if we want to solve big picture problems. Uh, I've worked, like I said, all over the world, and I've actually studied climate change. I've studied natural hazards, faults and earthquakes and wildfires and landslides and floods. <laughs> Our house flooded in a week and a half ago when Acton flooded, so I can tell you about those. Uh, but these are things that we're going to have to work together as a community to address, and I, I, that's the approach that I want to take. 
So it's not just me talking at you. I want this to be the start of a dialogue. So, I mean, obviously there is going to be time for questions in a few minutes, but I also want to invite you all to get in touch with me uh, via email, call me up if you want to go have coffee or anything. Let's just start talking about what we can do to work on the issues that are most important. So, uh, what I really am focusing on right now, and obviously there's a ton of issues that you have to look at when you serve in Congress. But my key ones that I want to talk to you about just briefly, uh, one is obviously the environment. I am an environmental scientist. That's what I do. Uh, and I think environment, it gets, it's been polarized, but it doesn't have to be. Because we all want clean air and clean water, soils that aren't contaminated. <laughs> Whitaker Burmite. <laughs> we all want these things. We want a nice, safe, clean community to raise our families in and to you know, socialize in and to just be a part of. So I want to make sure that we continue to protect the environment and that we balance the needs of our community with the needs of having a healthy environment. So that's going to be a priority for me, is making sure we have these protections that California has been a leader in, and that's what gives us the nice place to live that we call home. Uh, for education, I taught for two years at Cal State Los Angeles, uh, and so I've have had hands-on in the classroom experience, and I love it. And my mom, before she joined the FBI, was a public school teacher. She's a Spanish teacher, so she actually taught me how to speak Spanish, too. So hablo espanol también. <laughs> so that's also part. I want to make sure we're including our Latino community members, too, as we move forward. Uh, but for education, I really think that we've seen some troubling things with Betsy DeVos and what she's saying about getting rid of the funding for our public schools. And here in Canyon Country, we mostly have very good schools. There's a couple that we could stand to improve a little bit, but for the most part, we have a good system. And we need to make sure that that system is working for every kid in the system. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that teachers have better pay and that they have smaller class sizes and there's more training for the teachers. Uh, a study actually by UC Berkeley came out that said that the majority of teachers in elementary schools, uh, this was study was 2012, but the majority of teachers in the last three years before the study had not had any science training. And this was for science teachers. They had no training, and they felt inadequately prepared to teach their students. So we need to make sure that we're giving the teachers the resources they need to succeed, because then in turn, the students will get better resources you know, from the teachers, better intellectual resources. So that's a priority for me. And then what I really would like to do for our local economy, uh, we have a lot going for us here in the 25th, and it's just how do we harness that? So as a scientist, I look at things in several different ways. I like to look at all the data and then come to conclusions based on that facts. So what I've seen is that we have a great combination here of mechanical know-how and people who can build things and, and create. And then we have a really great intellectual bank of people, people who know how to design and innovate. So if we can combine those two things, this area can become a green technology research and development hub for the, you know, for the 21st century and beyond. Like Silicon Valley is leading the way in the tech sector. Well, why don't we claim green tech? Because we have lots of wind, lots of solar, and we have tons of resources here in terms of knowledge and know-how. So I want to bring money from the federal government back to the community to create a cycle of innovation. That's what they've done in Boston, and that's what they've done in Silicon Valley. And we can do that here. So I want to use my, my science knowledge and how to go and get federal money, which I know how to do for my research. I want to apply that to Congress. So, uh, and then in addition to that, uh, the last thing that I'm really focusing on, on right now is, of course, health care. Uh, you can't... You can't show up and talk to a group of people without bringing that up these days. Uh, and just so everybody knows uh, that I actually am in favor of Medicare for everybody. Uh, it is actually a pretty good success in terms of people's satisfaction with it compared to some other systems. And it has a lot lower administrative costs than your private sector uh, methods. Uh, the administrative cost for Medicare is basically 2% of the overall cost. Uh, it's six times higher for the private sector. So I think that that's something we might not be able to get there tomorrow, but I think taking that rule that caps Medicare for 65 and up and we get rid of it, that's something that we can work towards. So that's what I'm in favor of. It doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow, but I think it's something that, you know, we've got people in this country, everybody who's an American is deserving to be treated equally. So I want to make sure everybody gets access to the right health care that they need. Uh, and then I really want to emphasize one of the big things under health care for me that's a priority is lowering the maternal and infant mortality rate. 
because right now, we're, we're a really advanced country, and yet we have women and babies dying at rates that are as bad as some countries that we would definitely not consider developed. So we can work on that. And that means that we have, we have to have better access to health care and reproductive health care and you know, screenings, preventative care. We need that for everybody. So that's the things that I am working towards. And the, the message that I want to leave you all with is that you know, I'm here to listen and to adapt because this isn't, you know, one side yelling at another. This isn't top down. It's, it needs to be responsive. It needs to be an integrated collaborative effort. If we want to make decisions that are going to make the community better, you're never going to find someone who you agree with 100% unless it's yourself. So you've got to work with people to get to a place where you can move forward as a group, as a community. So that's what I'm working on, and I really want to make sure that we all, I mean, nobody in this room strikes me as a hateful, scary person. So we need to all use what we have to push back against hate and intolerance, and we've got to work with our neighbors because we are all a community. So that's why I'm here. And I'm happy to take questions. And if they get to be long, let's meet up and talk about them later, too, because I don't want to take the whole night. I want to make sure you all get to talk about everything else, too. But thank you for having me. This has been really nice. OK. <laughs> yes. You know, I mentioned earlier I'm an elected official, too, and I'm elected on the COC Board of Trustees, yes. which is, is a nonpartisan position, as are all school right. board positions. So now I, my question for you is, what, um, uh, what is your party affiliation? Because Oh, I didn't even say that. I'm sorry. I'm running as a Democrat. So okay. I started as a Republican when I was a kid. I was raised by two Republicans, and uh -huh. I moved. But like I said, I think to me, it's, you know, I am running as a Democrat. I think it's important to talk to people, though, because we always need to, to refine our views and compromise. Yeah. Okay, and just one thing I was going to mention, I, and I will call you because I'd like to sit yes, down and please. learn more about you. But um, one of the things I will mention, because I don't know if you're aware of this, you were talking about more science training for mm -hmm. teachers. College of the Canyons actually has a program where the college science teachers go into elementary schools and they... Um, I heard about yeah. that. I, I was talking to a fellow in the marketing department. He yeah. was helping my nonprofit right. out. He told me about it. So I haven't explored it much, but we yeah. wanted to this school year. Very that's, good. And yeah. then the only other thing I have for you, I just had a question. Um, you were talking about your involvement with the, the Blueprint. Blueprint Earth, yes. Yeah. Do you, have you worked at all with any of the elementary schools out in this area? No, we've started to explore some partnerships. Uh, we wanted to work with schools in Acton, uh, specifically because it's close to my house, sure. so that would be nice. That makes sense. But most of our volunteer scientists are actually located over on the east side of Los Angeles. Yeah. So it's going to be a who can we get to work with. But if we have people in the community who, would, who work in science fields who want to engage, right. we'd love to start partnering with them. Because there are a number of schools, I'm sure you probably are aware, there's a number of yes. schools that are primarily Latino populations yes. out in this area. Yeah. Yes, and we need that. And we want to go, we want to expand to more schools in LA and Ventura counties. Uh, my husband grew up in Simi Valley and oh. Moore Park, so yeah. we have this, you know, this need to go out there too. So right. we're going to be, it's all funding dependent. Is, right, sure. So, and our initial uh, grant allowed us to go to this, uh, our first school in Pacoima, and then we've also been working over in East LA too. Very good. Well, yeah. thank you for your oh. time. No, but thank you. And I'd love to talk more. <laughs> I've been very concerned, I'm Sally White, and I've Hello. been very concerned about uh, the environmental issues that we have in this valley, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering uh, what your thoughts are about the Newhall Ranch project in particular, <laughs> 21,500 new homes that want to be built yes. right along our wonderful Santa Clara River, adding uh, to the congestion and mm -hmm. to the air pollution, because all summer long until just the past couple of days, we've had air that was either bad for sensitive oh, yeah. people or bad for everyone. So I yes. just would like to know what your thoughts are. On oh, that. no, that's a great question. Thank you. And uh, I will tell you with the bad air, my husband has very severe asthma. So <laughs> we've been feeling it, too, even up in Acton. Uh, we've been getting the wind blowing through, and he actually had to go for a breathing treatment at the uh, urgent care. So we, feel, we felt it. Um, 
But yeah, I think you know that we have such a delicate balance here, and everybody wants the quality of life, and the developers are buy, 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 build, build, build. So it obviously is good for the economy, it's good for job creation, but we do have to balance the concerns of the people who are already here, and particularly the integrity of the environment. So I think what we need to be doing is making sure that the different groups who are interested, community members and the developers, everybody, is having their concerns heard, and we're not weighing money over quality quality of life. So, you know, we don't just want to line anyone's pockets. We want to make sure that people in the community are still able to have the quality of life that they came here for. So I would want to make sure that we allow community leaders to have a voice in the whole process because I think there's some serious potential risks for that development, but at the same time, it's really hard to say stop that, you know, stop the development because they've bought the land and the water rights have been a whole issue. And, you know, there's there's so many issues that we're going to have to address. I mean, we've got Chiquita Canyon and then over in Simi, there's Rocket Dine is still a problem. Whitaker Bermite is getting better. <laughs> I, Rick was telling me I missed his good presentation about it, but... I mean, these are all things that they're not going to go away, and, uh, you know, to say nothing of Semex. So, I mean, but that one in particular, that one because there's already a community there that is being impacted, I think we need to, the, and this is one thing that goes for any sort of thing that comes from the top down, you have to get there and show yourself and be loud. Uh, because that's the only way the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So I'm a very big fan of encouraging people to go speak to the people who make the decisions. Uh, because they won't go against popular sentiment if it's strong enough. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a really long answer, sorry. <laughs> This is good. All right. I mean, I could tap dance or something, but I, you don't want to see that. But, uh, oh, no, we have one more? Okay, good. All right. You meant, oh, my name's Laura. Hi. Hi, Laura. <laughs> um, you mentioned a lot of areas of interest. Do those correspond to the committees you would want to be a part of in Congress? Or do you have other committees, other interests that you would want to work on as a member of Congress? Good question. Um, so I would love to be on the House Science Committee, uh, which our current representative is on. Uh, so I think it would be great to have an actual scientist serving on the Science Committee. But of course in Congress they kind of, they don't let you always choose. Uh, it's a little bit more you get delegated and then if they like you, they give you one that they think you will like. Uh, but I'm actually, uh, I'm a lifelong learner. Uh, I started actually as an English major. I graduated with a history degree for my undergrad. And then my, my geology degree is, you know, that was later, that was graduate work. So, uh, and I'm constantly learning. So for me, I get really excited about all sorts of things. So if someone said, hey, we're gonna put you on armed services, I would say, great, let me learn. I haven't served, but let me learn. And I would love to talk to people who have the expertise in those areas. That's how I think most people should do things, is if you don't know the answer, you go to people who do have the answer. Uh, so in particular, I'd be very interested in anything international focused because I have lived abroad and I've worked so much abroad. So interacting, how the U.S. interacts with the rest of the world to me is, is a really important thing, especially in this day and age. Uh, but I'm also really interested in land use and agriculture and sustainable food sources. Uh, these are going to be the big picture challenges that we see coming down the pipeline. So, I mean... But I would be happy with any committees that they put me on because, you know, it's such a great experience to learn and to make a different sort of impact. So, I mean, there's nothing really that I get bored with. It's, I, it, my husband says I have a, you know, a chronic reading problem, and he's, he's right. <laughs> so to answer, I'd love, I'd love science, but anything else I'd be really happy with too. All right. Great. And please, do get in touch. Oh, I should tell you, my website is jess2018.com. So, and I can email, I, maybe I can email Judy or, or Brett or maybe you, Rick, I don't know, and you guys could send out like a re, just my email address and my phone number so that everybody could have it. So I do want to make myself available if you have ideas, suggestions, thoughts, specific things, like we can sit down and work on them. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.